Traditional thermal power plants, also sometimes called combustion power plants, they operate with energy produced by a steam boiler, historically fueled by coal or sometimes heating oil. More modern thermal power stations operate by combusting natural gas or as well as by biomass. The steam activates a turbine in which drives an alternator to produce electricity. This system is called a turbine alternator. After the steam passes through the turbine at extremely high pressure, the steam is condensed in a steam condenser and recycled to where it was heated. The cooling medium cooling the condenser is also water. This is cooled here in a natural draft cooling tower. Turbine alternators are usually housed in a large gallery building. The large windows are not only for light, but as an expansion blast outlet in case of a sudden steam explosion or leak. Here we can see some turbine alternators outside at a steelworks in Germany. In this part of the video, Dave and myself, Andy, are at the former Willington A and B thermal power station site where during its peak 8,000 tonnes of coal were combusted each day. Let's now explore this site to see what engineering history is left behind. Now it's known as the Five Sisters. We've wanted to come here for some time but due to other things we've been in Germany but we're here today. And it's exploring Dave. Hello, good morning. <laughs> We've been waiting for a nice day. It's a little bit windy, but this is a natural draft cooling tower. So it is drafty, it's in the name. So we're gonna send the drone up and get you some aerial footage. Let's go. Unfortunately, that didn't go well. I shouldn't have flown my drone inside a cooling tower. Well, I sent the drone back to DJI and they said it had a fault in the inertial measurement unit. This is what controls the gyros, accelerometers and compass. They sent me a replacement, but for Willington, I don't have any drone footage. I do, however, have some more of an active power station later on, so stay tuned. They're known locally as the Five Sisters. They were going to be demolished and two of them were completely stripped out for demolition. But then for some reason it just never happened and they've just sat here ever since. This one and that one are completely stripped out, all the internal parts are removed. But these three here have still got all the kit within them. And by kit I mean the spray heads, there's a part they call the fill, there's a part they call the drift eliminator. They're all inside these massive chimneys. Now these are called natural draft cooling towers and they use a ventilation system where you see at the bottom where there's big gaps now air's drawn in those gaps and it goes and it's drawn up by the heat and it mixes with water that's coming down from spray heads and the spray heads go over something called fill they have a fill element in them and the heat from the water transfers into the air and the air carries on up because heat rises and it makes the air go up then continues through the fill goes past the spray nozzles and then it goes up to something called a drift eliminator now the air going up although everybody calls it steam or air it's actually known as drift and the drift eliminator separates the water from the air 
so the water can be reused. Right, exploring Dave up there. Hello! And a big chimney. Natural draft cooling tower. Now these metal grill parts you can see. The light adjusts. Try and get the exposure right for you. These parts here. These are called the fill. And above there there would have been the spray heads. You can still see the spray heads actually, they are still in. Those metal pieces going across there, the sprayers. Can't see the drift eliminators though, they look like they've been removed. They were higher up, they were further above the sprayer heads. The drift eliminators missing in this one. But they were probably made of a precious metal so they've been scrapped. Whereas the, the fill is just concrete blocks, they're not, they're not any sort of precious metal, it's just concrete, there's no second hand value to it. So there's your fill. This is the water inlet pipe. This is the hot water from the power station, from the turbines. Hot water goes in there and it's pumped up the centre line, up to the spray heads, then it sprays out all over, comes down over the fill, the air's going the other way, the air goes up to the drift eliminator, and any water that hits the drift eliminator comes back down, and it all flows back down into this, which is the cold water basin. And then it goes off to there'll be a big discharge valve uh, which we looked at earlier on the other one actually there'll be a grill and then a big valve and it goes back to the power station just see the scale of the engineering that went into this that's one of the hasps, that's my hand, that's the size of the equipment they were using here and this big valve big valve head above it that would have all been controlled from the uh, power station to control the amount of water going in to the cooling tower. I need to also show you where the water goes back to the power station so we'll find the cold water outlet that's like a suction and it sucks it back through a pump back to the power station then. So underneath us there'll be a big pipe network and the hot water. The power station used to be over there and it was Will Willington A and Willington B. Willington A, I'll have to consult my notes for this because I can't remember all these dates. I'm not an encyclopedia. So, Station A, Willington A, construction began in 1954, Willington B, 1959. They opened in Willington A, 57, Willington B, 1962. Now, Willington A closed in 1995, Willington B in 1999. This was all due to coal. When this power station, Station A and Station B, were on full fire, full power, they used 8,000 tonnes of coal a day, just here. So there's a lot of carbon. That's why they're decommissioning these uh, coal-fired power stations. So that's why you're seeing a lot of substation areas like that over there. There's a substation in the background there. It's just part of the national grid, but there's no power station here anymore. And that substation is powered by wind turbines, solar farms, things like that. But the actual station A and station B are long gone. But these cooling towers still remain for one reason or another. So Dave's just going to show us inside. Do you want to tell the viewers what you just did when he was in there? So, yeah. Bit of a scary moment. Walked across the concrete pipe there, and then you've got to look up because you're inside the cooling tower. But then, as you look up, and the clouds are going across the top, and the wind's blowing through you, it feels like everything's moving. So, I had a bit of vertigo moment. So, I clenched my ass cheeks together a bit, and uh, <laughs> I thought that's not a good idea. No, so you can see there where the inlet valve's been wound shut and then cut off with an oxyacetylene cutter so they've shut the valve so there's no water flow anymore I 
I didn't know it's precarious as that. With my gimbal and my backpack and the wind and... It's just windy when you get here, isn't it? Yeah. Well, uh... Oh! See that rain? Yeah, it's windy. Yeah, you look up and there's all wind in there. I think what I'll do is not look up. It's quite scary this because it's it's quite scary this because it is really windy. It's like trying to push me off this massive pipe. So I've got all the fill above me. Can you see the fill? Now all the water would have run down over that fill, cooling the water down, heating the air up, and the air becomes drift as it turns into steam. It's quite a pipe, wasn't it? Yeah, big pipe. So where we stood now, this would have been an absolute torrent of water. You can see over there the fill sections. There would have been water flooding down over those as the air passes over them. It's just a shame the drift eliminators are missing so I can't show you those but I'll put a picture of them up. It's quite scary this because you can't turn left or right. Don't want to go backwards. And here we are at the centre of a natural draft cooling tower. See all the fill elements there. And there's exploring Dave. Oh. <laughs> right, so that is that is Willington Station A and Station B Power Station Cooling Towers. I'm going to head back out now. It's real precarious on this pipe, I don't like it. So we're getting ourselves back out now. We're going to look at the um, where the water went back to the power station. Watch you that, Dave. Thank you. Yeah, just stiff knees. That's all it's stiff these days. Oh, it's still rolling. <laughs> we got all that on film. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> oh, no. Oh, exploring Dave. More outtakes. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we could fill a whole episode up just of outtakes, couldn't we? Should we do, should we do a video of outtakes, people? Yeah. Leave a comment below. Answers on the postcard. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave a comment. <laughs> yeah. I think this would have been a pump pit and there'd have been floats and the micro switches to uh, bring the pumps on and off, control the level of water. Ah, uh, yeah, like a, like a pressure relief header. Yeah. So yeah. it can pump from the power station and it can sort of bubble away in here. Yeah. Lose all the air out the water before it goes through the cooling tower. That's right. Or on the return side. Return perhaps. side to the cooling to the power station. Return think, side to the power station. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. There's been a, one of them big lights on there. Looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah, the big uh, Marshalling Yard type lights. That's part of the fuse holder. So we're just having a look around the rest of the power station area, seeing if we can see anything else. Apparently the, the old coal hopper area is still here and the freight yard from the, the railway, there used to be a railway side in here where they dropped all the coal off out of big wagons, it dropped into a big chute and then there was a big conveyor belt that went off to the power station, Willington A and Willington B. So there was actually two power stations here. You're in deep water now Dave. I won't be if I were over the side of that fence. I bet that is deep as well. I wouldn't like to hazard a guess how deep that is. But you can see the uh, cables for the float switches there. Oh yeah, I'll come in. How do I get in? There. So they all in the fence. Again. So, what have we got here then, Dave? Right, just a holding tank back up to bit. 
out, see them from where you are, but the uh, cables for the float switches, that's the tops for them, the connections. Yeah, float level sensors. Yeah. Yeah, the lights. It's winter, and in winter in the United Kingdom, the sun's always very low. Um, so it's making it difficult for filming, there's lots of shadows, things like that. So I do apologise, but I can't move the sun, which is over there. The big bright thing, look. Can't move that. But yeah, here are the uh, float switches. And this was some sort of holding tank for the water. Well, the life boy's still floating, so that's good. But like Dave says, he wouldn't like to hazard a guess at how deep this is. Very. I'm going to go with very. Very? Yes. Well, it'll stop when it gets to the bottom. <laughs> so we're going to go over here, which is where the railway sidings were. Now, they used to drop all the coal off for the power station. Back here, we're going to try and find if we can see any of the hopper network. So I was just getting some shots of the Five Sisters there. So we're near the railway sidings, where the railway sidings were. So if we go a bit further into there, we might start seeing some railway area. This is all shut down now. That's the active railway. That's just the sidings that we want to look at, where they were dropping off all the coal when this was operational. So this is the coal yard sidings. Here the coal for combustion in the power station was delivered by merry-go-round trains from the local collieries. The coal was then handled into this hopper and it was conveyed over to the boiler house where the coal was combusted to start the power production cycle. They haven't took this away because it's bonded into the concrete and they couldn't be bothered. So there will be, what we're looking for is where the coal trucks used to come in. They used to, be, they used to go around in a big merry-go-round and there was a lever that pushed and it opened a hatch on the bottom of the coal trucks and it just dumped the coal out the bottom. We're looking for that. So apparently that's still here. We're in a bad way, but it's still, still here somewhere. I think this is possible this. you can see where there's been sleepers here, look. Oh yeah, so it's had train track on it. There's been one there and one there. So this could be it. And this could be the big area where it dumped the coal in. It's being filled in now. But, uh, and then there was a there was a large conveyor belt that went along underneath the pylons and then up and into the power plant over there. Sorry I'm filming into the sun, but yeah the power plant was over here. There was a big conveyor system went that way. And we believe this is where the coal was dumped into before it went off for combustion in the furnaces. The, the active railway is just over there. And this was a big sidings area all for the power station.
so this is Willington Station A and Station B with the five sisters, the cooling towers. I'm Andy. And I'm Dave. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't done also. Haven't done also. I haven't done also. No, I don't know what that means. I've done a lot of stuff, but I haven't done also. Yeah. Start again. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. I'm Andy. And I'm Dave. This is ALW Exploration. New videos every Tuesday and Thursday at 8pm. Bye bye for now. Bye.